Hey guys, RPM here. Hope you're all doing well and having a really great day. In this video, I just want to update you all on the Ethereum merge. Apparently, there is an update in terms of, I guess, the configurations, configs. The code is now finally finished for the, I believe it's called the Kiln testnet, public testnet called Kiln. And it's finally done. And so there's going to be a lot of testing going on. I'll talk about this in a sec. I want to now focus on here Bitsby Trippin had a tweet not too long ago. He says here, bottom line, looks like ETH uh, POS merge is going to be delayed a bit longer. And he referenced here from Cornell University. It says two attacks on proof of stake, ghost slash Ethereum. And they said here, we present two attacks targeting proof of stake, Ethereum consensus protocol. The first attack suggests a fundamental conceptually incompatibility uh, between POS and greed heaviest observed subtree ghost. A fork choice paradigm employed by POS Ethereum. In a nutshell, POS allows for adversary with a vanishing amount of stake to produce an unlimited number of equivocating blocks. While most equivocating blocks will be orphaned, such orphaned uncle blocks still influence fork choice under the ghost paradigm, bestowing upon the adversary devastating control over the canonical chain. While the latest message driven LMD aspect of current POS Ethereum prevents a straightforward application of this attack, our second attack shows how LMD specifically can be exploited to obtain a new variant of the balancing attack that overcomes a recent protocol addition that was intended to mitigate balancing type attacks. Thus, in its current form, POS Ethereum without and with LMD is vulnerable to our first and second attack, respectively. So that is interesting, but there is apparently already a patch out for that. Okay, so there was a tweet I saw from Dean Eigenman. It's time to go on another three-year side quest with to change ETH 2.0 again. And he referenced the Cornell University uh, post here. And then below that, we have another tweet from Trent.eth. He says here that no. <laughs> and he referenced a github.com pull request, which I'll show you guys right here. It says remove equivocating validators from fork choice consideration. So apparently this was committed three days ago. So I believe pretty much after the Cornell University post, apparently this has now been, I guess, thwarted. Uh, the two potential attacks on proof of stake. So you guys can see this whole thing here. I'm not a coder. I don't really understand uh, what they are doing here. But apparently this was a fix and that is now implemented. Okay, so I guess that is one thing that in terms of Ethereum potentially being delayed is now potentially, I believe, already thwarted. It will not happen. An attack like that won't happen on proof of stake. So anyways, that's that. Let me know what you guys think about this. Next one is the final countdown to Ethereum merge begins as configs for the last public testnet go live. Now, this is a blog post on cryptonews.com. And there's been also a lot of other tweets, which I'll read from uh, various sources here. So big one here, it says, we really need the community to help us in testing this important upgrade, which is the Kiln public testnet right here. As uh, you can see on the GitHub, there's been a lot of updates here the past couple days. Going down here, it says to help us in the testing this important upgrade. If you are a user trying to set up a node, send some transactions, maybe try to deploy your favorite DeFi protocol. We compiled a list of interesting things to try out here. So if we open this up, you can see testing the merge and you can see there's a lot of testing, obviously, that needs to be done in terms of it looks like, yeah, users, technical, I got highly technical stuff here. And wow, this is this is a lot, right? This is a lot. And so I guess this goes along with these two attacks on proof of stake, which was already uh, from Cornell University and then already updated, right, with this pull request. And then now that we're seeing all of this, all this testing that needs to be done, I wonder if this will still come out in July or September or heck, if proof of work will still be okay up until next year. This is a lot of testing that needs to be done. So looking at a tweet here from Mr. Marius, he says here, we need to push the TDD back due to some miners mining with GPUs, how to hear that this is a good drill for us as it tests how it, how an issue on the mainnet in the last second can be mitigated. There's apparently there are GPUs mining on the testnet right now that says, please update your node, all configs in the repositories and the Docker images should be updated. So make sure you use the new ones with a terminal difficulty of, uh, I don't know how big that number is, 20 trillion. Uh, you can check to see if your CL client is on the correct difficulty by running the curl 
local host, yada, yada, yada. And it says here, why did this happen? Someone kept running a GPU miner, which we didn't suspect when deciding on the TTD parameter. This changed the timeline for the merge. Uh, can this happen on the mainnet? Not because we want the merge to happen at a certain time, but if we find an issue shortly. And going along, it says before the TTD would hit the mainnet, we can use this mechanism to postpone the merge until the issue is fixed. Does this mean the merge will be delayed? No, but it is a really good opportunity for us to test our crisis management. Uh, what happens if someone doesn't update in time? Uh, your node will stop importing blocks at TTD and you might end up on the side chain, but you can easily update your configs and join the correct chain again. All right, so... It says, what happens if more GPUs join the network? I don't think we'll move the TDD again if they do. Then we would have to work on the weekend. Again, this is not a security threat or anything. We just don't want a merge to occur on the weekend. So <laughs> that's interesting. So some GPUs are causing some issues uh, on the public uh, kiln testnet. So anyways, guys, th there's a lot of stuff happening. And, you know, I've been looking at uh, as well as the merge mainnet readiness checklist. So looks like, yeah, the kiln is, I guess, successfully, uh, the, the last public testnet is there, but it's just now looking at the whole readiness checklist. It just looks like there's a lot of, I guess, just a lot of testing that needs to be done. So it is now March, right? It's the middle of March as of recording this video. Will they have enough time to, I guess, in May to finally just say conclude and complete the code, I guess the, you know, essentially code freeze on this. And so if that does happen in May and then it is hard forked in uh, July or June, they're going to have to mention that, right? Or maybe they announce that everything is all tested and ready to go by July and then it could be implemented in September. Or there could be just a slew of issues, right? Just a whole bunch, as you guys can see here, of what needs to be tested, I'm, I'm going to assume that this there's a lot here. And if anything slips up, right, anything slips up, like, you know, like an attack on proof of stake or these types of things, anything can slip through, right? And if it's not tested, it could be devastating on the Ethereum network. So this is this is huge, right? This is huge. And you can see here going down, it uh, looks like, you know, a lot of things need to be tested, right? Just, it's just it's just all about testing and another tweet I want to read here from Tim Baker it says to add to this the amount of data we we gather on kiln can be directly influenced on how soon we are ready for the merge uh, this is the time for application tooling infrastructure providers and developers to test things if there are bugs now's when we want to find them all right so let me say here this is possible kiln is the biggest milestone for the ethereum merge I urge you once again to participate in this test net and I look forward to delivering POAP to every active participant. It's showtime, friends. All right. So it looks like Ethereum, crypto, Twitter, everyone is, it seems like those developers seem to be pretty positive in all of this. And I mean, all of us miners, you guys know, we're all hoping that this doesn't come to fruition anytime soon. But, you know, they, they're sounding pretty positive on crypto Twitter. I was reading the ETH R&D. It seems like a lot of work is being done there. And who knows? So again, I, I'm just doing these videos to update you guys on the Ethereum merge, uh, whether how small or how big the issues are or problems or the news that comes about this. This will and does affect all of us GPU miners as we are all, you know, wondering what's going to happen after Ethereum. And, you know, the Ethereum network hash rate continues to rise. And so, you know, that's going to be pretty, pretty devastating as once Ethereum moves away from proof of work, Again, it begs the question, where is all that hash rate going to go? And, you know, if it's going to render other coins unprofitable and the prices of those coins going to really depend. So anyways, my friends, let me know your thoughts of all this. And if there's any other updates that I missed, please let me know. But uh, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated on anything that comes about. And if anything that happens towards us miners either good news or bad news. I will definitely update you guys on that. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good one and peace out.